Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I was just about to mount my duels, but I thought, you know, before I do this, I'm gonna take a quick video because I know everybody's gonna ask and this way I can show you without taking off the duels. So this is how, if you guys don't know how these duels work that were on this quad, these are the original one. These are the click duel um, ones. You just crank these two dials and then you give the wheel a half a turn the wrong way. So I mean, the way that it drives, you kick this wheel that way because it clicks in. You give this wheel a click, kick it that way. So drive it up on a log, kick it off, and these come off. I can take all these tires off in like a few minutes, but I'm having a hard time finding these. They're not a Canadian made thing. I don't know where they are. You can see that the writing's not even, well, you can't really, but I don't know where they come from Sweden or something. And they want like $2,500 for them. And it's going to take months to get here. So I still want to order a set. I just, it's going to take too long to get it. And I want it right away. So I've come up with a solution, a lot cheaper and I don't see why it won't work. It's basically essentially the same thing as that. So basically you take off your wheel nuts. You can buy these on Amazon. I'll show you over there what they look like. And you thread these on to your, where your existing nuts used to go on. These are called stud um, spacers. I think how these are supposed to work is you're supposed to take your tire off, put these on, and then put your tire back on. I don't see how that would be str really strong enough to hold your quad but that's what they're for. And then I put, so this is a two inch, a two inch, and this is a one inch, and this is a one inch and a half. It's kind of annoying that I had to do that because you can only get them in two inch, one inch, an inch and a half. And if I put this one on here, it wasn't quite enough and so on and so forth. So on the back tire, I had to do a few more spacers because these are takeoff tires off a of Honda. If I had four tires off of a solid axle, you can get away with a two inch and an inch and a half and it'll bolt right on. But since this is actually off the Rubicon, the rims have a little bit of an off, um, the rim is just a little bit different. It's more out, so I had to have the one more spacer to make it work. But they do work, it fits on there pretty decent. Um, the nice thing about this is they're light, like these click spacers, because the rim, I don't really have a, I should have maybe taken one off, but they're very heavy, like they're, they're good quality, but this is very heavy, it's like a pipe. So you got all that and then this rim here, it bolts, like this is a special rim and then this bolts in and this piece is heavy and then you got that pipe behind it's heavy. Like I, I wanna weigh one of these, but they're pretty heavy tires and this is super light. So I'm hoping on the 450, you won't even know these duels are on there with these. I'll show you what these, what these things look like when you buy them. So when you buy them, you can get a set of, they came with 16 and I think it was like $65. So I mean, they're super cheap. So if they don't work, I'm not out a whole lot. And they look like this. Cause like I said, you're supposed to take your tire off, thread this on and then put your tire back on. So what I had to do was take it to this grinder here and grind them in the shape so that they have the shape of the, of the nut, right? Cause you got to hold your tire on. That's not the best one, but I actually broke that one. So that one's junk. Anyways, so you have to grind them down to the shape. So I've got lots of spares. And then you can uh, just shred them on and, uh, and then start stacking your spaces on. Now, do I recommend this for everybody? Probably not because I don't know if this is gonna be super strong, but I'm not worried about it, this being a six wheeler. Cause say I'm cruising down the road and let's say that this breaks off this wheel and all of a sudden, boom, boom, it goes. I'm not gonna die. I still have other wheels. The odds of both of these breaking off at the same time and me crashing are a lot less likely. So I don't know, this would be kind of do at your own risk, but I mean, essentially this is the same idea as this one. You thread the wheel nuts off. I have a video on it if you guys want to see it, how that works, but I'll maybe put this together and then I'll do a little walk around of it uh, all put back together and show you how the final review looks. All right, so this is what it looks like with the duels on there. So just to let you know, so these are 24 inch, off of the F of a rancher. So I, I think they're a goofy rim. So they're, they're um, 24, 10 and 11 inch rim, which I kind of like because this tire, like you can see how much higher this one is. So I don't know really how if it's touching. Well, it looks like it's just barely touching. So when I'm going down the road, it's gonna be barely touching. So that's a 24 and this is a 25. So they're different size tires, which I kind of like because when you're cruising, then there's less pressure on the front one sinking it and then when this tire gets there it can push a little bit further into the ruts to kind of get you through is kind of the plan and then it kind of worked out nice because 
as I think I told you before, I, these are the takeoff tires that came on the 1000. So this tire and the front tire were the back ones. That was the front tire. So this tire is like actually really skinny. I don't know what the sizes are because the numbers are all mumbo jumbo. So this one's skinnier than this one. It's fatter. So it kind of gives them a like this, which I kind of like because I'm going to use this mostly, well, for every terrain, but for water is the main thing. I actually put the tires on backwards because I noticed on Argos, they always put the treads on backwards to kind of propel it through water. And I'm hoping that this tread design will also propel water nice. And then with it being v like that, maybe that'll help, you know, the water will kind of come around and maybe this one will catch it. I don't know. Maybe my theory is not very good, but... And the reason I did that was because I wanted to put this fatter tire up front. I know that the fatter tire won't cut the water as nice, but I'm hoping it'll give it a little bit more, you know, flotation. I mean, it was good before, but a little more foot a little more stability because these tires aren't as wide so I was like we'll put the ones up here maybe that'll even everything out i am running one inch wheel spaces on the front it did fit before but it kind of rubbed a little bit and i want the tires to stick out because that gives it more more flotation also but i'm running three psi in here and i took this thing for a burn down the road and man with these with this tire setup on here you can't even tell there's duels on here with those other ones yeah i was in low range most of the time because they're just heavy tires and then they were they were the same tread all the way across so like when you go to turn it was just like Argh. whereas this one when you turn you know this tire here is skinny because when you're turning it it seems like it's mostly this one that's kind of grinding in the middle right and this one's skinny so it slides and then this one's got almost no weight on it so i don't know it turns really nice i'll do a video of it after but i don't have anybody here to video for me and I also remounted my boat engine on here a lot better because before I had it mounted like with a board here because we we're in a campground and have a lot of stuff. So anyways, now you can just give this a drop. It latches in, pull that out, turn it on, away you go. And then I kind of put the hitch like that. Just, I mean, it's not really going to protect, but if somebody hits, maybe it'll inflict some damage on them more than me. And then when I'm just booting around, I can just grab this lever and then just tip it up. Oop, I'm going to put that in first. I can just tip it up. Ah, there we go i can tip it up and then i won't be hitting it on absolutely everything and then of course when i'm going down the road i can all you gotta do is undo this one and then this thing will just pull right up and you can turn it in turn this in and then i can lean it in hold that in and it's all packed up and ready to go down the road you wouldn't even know it was there i can cruise anywhere i need to go so anyways that's what it looks like i think it looks good with this dual setup like I said, they're not as aggressive, but I think it's actually going to do better because I'll have more power, more speed in the water. I want to go do another video in the water. Like I said, I just don't have anybody to help me video right now. But Oh, and I also want to talk about the things that broke on this thing when we were in Florida. All right, so just to confirm the kilometers, that's 705 kilometers, so barely anything. And I mean, I know Florida was hard on things. There was a lot of sand in the water and whatnot, but check out my brake pads. I mean, it destroyed these brake pads you're gonna say oh i rode the brakes i barely touched the brakes because with all those duels on there that thing as soon as you let off the gas it was just like Arr! it would just slow you right down and then of course it has pretty good engine braking as it is so i barely touched the brakes so i think the sand just got in there and ate them up I also this oil seal that's the front output shaft oil seal this one blew out when we were in texas at sabine and caused us a whole bunch of trouble we ended up I'm dad oil and blah blah blah. This winch solenoid actually quit before we even left for Florida. So this thing didn't even last. I think it lasted one ride and this thing cooked out. So we had to get a new one of those put on it. And then this sensor, I forget what this was for. Maybe you guys know, but the check engine light would come off and on whatever limp mode and that was to do with this thing. So that's what broke on it. It was at the shop for that felt like forever just to get those few things fixed. But she is back now, she is rolling. So, oh, what broke on this one? So this this one also went to Florida and all that broke on this one, I checked the brake pads, all good. This one has a thousand kilometers on it. And this seal here finally kind of was seeping, so I changed it. But check out the difference in seals. <laughs> so this is the output shaft for the Can-Am. This is the output shaft for the Honda. Like it fits in the middle. That's crazy how big that shaft is compared to the Honda. Like the shaft, same size as the shield. But I've never had any trouble with the Honda, except the, the seal, but I mean the sand got in there. So this is what broke on the Honda. This is what went on the Can-Am. While it was in there, it took them a while, I guess, to figure it out. And then 
I don't know why it was there so long, but it took them a couple weeks to figure that out. I also got them to do the diff uh, oils in it, and they said they were all pretty black. And there was a bit of filings in the um, oil. I'll put up a picture right here of the, the drain plug. It was quite full of filings. They said that because this quad, the engine and the transmission are one, every time it grinds a gear, those filings go right into the engine oil. Whereas like, as you know, on this one, it has an engine and then it has a transmission. I mean, they call it a gearbox, but it's a transmission basically. So if you grind gears, it's, that oil is going to stay. The, gears are, the, the filings are going to stay in your gearbox and not in your engine oil. So your engine oil stays clean. On this one, I don't know, if you grind the transmission, those filings are going straight into your oil. So if you have a 450, I would recommend maybe changing your oil more. Keeping an eye on that drain plug. It has a real nice magnet so you can keep it clean. So, yeah, that's it. Enjoy. Catch you guys in the next one.